All right, so we've been spending time really trying to predict inheritance patterns using the different inheritance rules we've been using. We've learned about regular dominant recessive traits. We've learned about incomplete dominance, where you sort of get this meeting in the middle when you have multiple dominant alleles. We've also talked about co-dominance, where you have um, two dominant alleles and they both want to be expressed. And so we've been going through and learning really all the wrinkles in genetics that um, create the variety that we see in front of us every day. And so one of the last ones we want to talk about is X and Y linked inheritance or sex linked genetics. Okay. So we know that in every single one of our cells, there are 46 chromosomes, right? Our cells have 46 chromosomes and 44 of those are what we call autosomes, meaning they code for hair color, eye color, height, how to make a heart, how to make a liver, all of those things, right? All the stuff to make the things our body needs. But we also have two sex chromosomes, okay? And those two sex chromosomes are X and Y. If you're a female, you have two X chromosomes. If you're a male, you have an X and a Y, okay? And so what's on these X and Y chromosomes? Well, for the most part, it, it tells uh, the body how to make uh, certain anatomical things and, and certain hormones and things like that. Uh, but there's also things on here that talks about uh, some other traits that we're going to look at as well. But essentially, um, you're looking at how to make things related to females or things related to males, essentially. Okay. Um, and you always inherit one from your mom and one from your dad. Okay. And so let's look at this for a second. Your mom will always give you an X. That's all she has, right? Females are XX. They can give you an X or they can give you an X. Males can give an X or a Y, depending on what's in their, their reproductive cells. If there's an X in there and that reproductive cell fertilizes the egg, you're going to have a little girl. Uh, if there's a Y in there and that reproductive cell fertilizes the egg, uh, that you're going to have a little boy. Okay. And so we're looking at uh, traits that are carried on these X and Y chromosomes because um, as you start to understand this, you'll see that uh, males and females don't inherit certain things equally, right? Females have two X's, males have an X and a Y. That's going to create some differences in terms of who's more likely to get what. And so we're going to look at that now, okay? So if we were going to draw a basic Punnett square uh, showing what, what are the possibilities um, for offspring, we would go like this. So we put mom across the top. We have basically an XX and an XY cross is what we're doing here. Here's mom, put dad down the side. We get XX in the first box, XX in the second, XY in the third, and XY in the fourth. My genotypes, our rule is ladies first. We have two XX and two XY. Again, we're still going to be pulling stuff from our Punnett square. That's not going to change. Okay. And so phenotype, we would say XX, we're going to have two females. XY, we're going to have two males. Okay. And that's what we'd expect, right? It's always a 50 50 shot. So no, don't even, don't let things like this confuse you. Let's say a married couple has five kids and they're all boys. What's the probability of their next child being a boy? It's always a coin flip, right? 50-50 shot. Um, every single time is a 50-50 chance uh, because those male reproductive cells, half of them are carrying an X and half of them are carrying a Y essentially, okay? And so 50-50 shot of having a boy or girl. Um, when we talk about traits being sex linked or X and Y linked, what does that even mean? Um, it means that on this X chromosome, let's see if you can kind of see, it kind of looks like this. That's why they call it an X and a Y. It kind of looks like that. Um, on these chromosomes, there are traits for different things. Like, uh, you know, this might tell you to make a certain protein. This might tell you to make a different protein. And so there aren't just uh, code for, uh, you know, male traits and female traits, there's there's other stuff on here as well. And so based on whether you get an X or Y is going to determine whether or not you're going to inherit those traits. There's traits, there's literal traits inherited 
only on the X's and only on the Y's. Okay. And so let's look at that note. I'll keep pink. Um, the first person to discover this was Thomas Hunt Morgan. He was actually studying fruit flies and eye color. And he noticed that um, based on whether these uh, fruit flies were coming out male or female, it was having an impact on whether or not they had white eyes or red eyes. And so because of that, this was sort of the first time that people started thinking about, um, you know, certain traits might be more common in males or certain traits might be more common in females. Eye color in fruit flies anyway is actually linked on those X chromosomes. And so depending on what kind of X's you got determined essentially your eye color in these fruit flies. So kind of a, a new thing that was discovered by Thomas Hunt Morgan. When we talk about um, X and Y linked inheritance, there's Y linked inheritance applies to the males and then X linked recessive and then X linked dominant. Okay, and so let's take a peek at those. The first one and uh, is uh, looking at Y linked inheritance. Again, this is only for males, right? Only males have a Y chromosome. So the trait we're going to look at for, for this one is hairy ears. Um, this is actually a Y link trait, having this sort of excessive uh, hair on the ears. And so this is not something females would have to worry about. Uh, they don't have a Y chromosome. And so if there was this trait that caused hairy ears on the Y chromosomes, it would never be uh, passed down to females uh, because dad will always pass down an X to his daughters, right? And so those are just some rules that we said here. Any gene found on the Y chromosome can only be passed down by the father. Any gene found on the Y chromosome can only be passed down to sons. And so why can't women uh, pass on an X-linked gene? Uh, they don't have an X, right? Women can't pass on this trait if they don't have that chromosome. So they are sorry, they don't have a Y, not an X. They don't have a Y to give, right? All they have are X's. Can a man pass down a Y link gene onto his daughters? No, right? Only to his sons, okay? And so when we would write hairy ears, we'd write it like this. We would write X, but we would not show anything on the X, no superscripts, because this is a Y link trait. If you would write X, Y, and then we will write an H on that Y to indicate that the hairy ears trait is on this Y chromosome. Okay, so a little bit different notation here. Let's look at X-linked inheritance. Okay, remember females are XX, males are XY. Can a woman pass down an X-linked trait? Yeah, in fact, that's all she can pass down. Can a man pass down an X-linked trait? Yes, he does have an X. You can see that there. Yes, but only to his daughters, right? And so when we talk about X-linked inheritance, it comes in two forms. X-linked dominant, meaning whatever the trait is that's on that X chromosome is dominant, or X-linked recessive, that X-linked trait um, is a recessive trait on that X chromosome. <clears throat> so you will express an X link dominant trait if you're a female and you have two of those dominant alleles. So big R, X big R, X big R. Or if you get one X big R, X little R, you'll still show whatever that capital R says. And for males, <coughs> you would get it if you had that X big R, Y. Okay, there's nothing on this Y chromosome. Notice there's no R on that, okay? Um, in X-linked recessive, females will get it if they get two recessive alleles. Remember, if you get a dominant, it's going to cover up that recessive. That rule still applies. But males will express it if they get one of those recessive Rs, okay? And so males can re uh, express an re uh, X-linked recessive trait if they get one of those recessive alleles, Okay. <laughs> So as we looked at X-linked dominant inheritance, we see some of this, but not a ton. Um, actually, one of the first sort of official studies they did on X-linked dominant traits was on a family in South Dakota. They noticed that they were passing down this uh, X chromosome with a mutation, and it was causing uh, the toes to be webbed in the offspring. And so um, that was one of the first things they, they had looked at. It was in the early 1930s. They were looking at this family and how they were passing on this, this 
uh, X with a mutation on it that was creating webbed toes in their family. So, um, so there is a few, like I said, webbed toes. You can kind of see here between the second and third toe. Um, there's some webbing on there. Um, web toes are a dominant mutation on the X chromosome. So if a heter woman who's heterozygous, we say heterozygous, meaning she's X, we'll use, oh, let's maybe use, we'll use R. X big R for web toes because it's dominant and X little R for normal toes. And a man with normal toes procreate. So he's going to be X. I always leave a little space and then put my Y. And he has normal toes. Well, we said um, the mutated uh, X is dominant. So then normal toes must be recessive. So that's what we would get. Okay. If we did our Punnett square, we'll just use mom there. We'll put dad here. X little r, y. We'd get X big r, X little r, X little r, X little r, X big r, y and x little r y so if we're talking genotypes we have one x big r x little r one x little r x oops x little r one x big r y and one x little r y phenotypes how are these people going to look and so this first one big r says webbed it's dominant little r says normal it's recessive because of this first big r here it was a different color maybe let me go with purple because of this big r right here big r says webbed and so we're going to have a female one webbed female here x little r x little r right? Little r says normal. You have two of them. We're going to have one normal toed female. X big r y. We're going to have one webbed male. And x little r y one normal male. So if somebody were to ask you, what's your chances of having a web toed little girl? Well, one out of four, it'd be a 25% chance there, okay? And so we can do the same statistics uh, that we've been doing and apply that stuff to figure out percentages and, and frequencies and things like that, okay? So most of what we see in biology are X-linked recessive traits. These are by far the most common in terms of X and Y-linked inheritance, okay? So in these situations, it's caused by an... Uh, a mutation on that X chromosome, but uh, a female to have it must have two recessive letters, right? If that that uh, that trait, um, whatever that trait is, is recessive, the only way that you can get it is if you get two recessive letters. If you get a, a capital letter, a dominant letter, it's going to cover up that recessive like we've talked about before, okay? And so there's a few that we want to look at, okay? Um, and one of them is called hemophilia and so hemophilia is where your body is missing this clotting factor in your blood and so we all have this this special uh, protein in our blood that helps it clot if you have hemophilia you're missing that clotting factor and so uh, when you get a cut a nosebleed things like that you it tends to be a much bigger issue um, you have a much much greater chance of having excessive bleeding and so it can be a health risk in a long time ago um, it was deadly in some cases, especially women that uh, were having babies. I mean, childbirth was a rough process a long time ago. Now imagine, you know, having this thing where your blood wouldn't clot. It made uh, something very dangerous, even even that much more so. And so it was, um, you know, one of those things for females that was quite scary. So um, the next one is called muscular dystrophy. And this is where you're missing this protein, which, and then it basically causes your muscles to deteriorate rapidly. This is a young man with muscular dystrophy, okay? And, um, and it's just one of those things. It's an X-linked recessive trait, okay? Another one that you've probably heard of before is colorblindness, and specifically red-green colorblindness. And so 
for us, or I shouldn't say us, I might have people that are uh, colorblind in class. Um, you look at that and you, you see the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. People that have red, green, colorblind, um, the, the rods and cones in their eyes are slightly different to the point where they can't pick up these, these wavelengths of light. Their eyes can't catch it very well. And so the, they don't see red as red. They see it more of like a, a brown or an orange. Um, and green is more of like a peach color. And so imagine looking at a traffic light, red, yellow, and green. They're seeing shades of yellows and browns here, okay? And so <clears throat> one of the things that's always fun to do in class is talk about, would you expect to find these traits more common in males or females? And um, we just kind of go around and we talk. And so I ask kids, um, you know, if you know somebody who's colorblind, and then I ask, is that person that you know, are they a male or a female? And I would say nine times out of 10, if I find out from a kid, they know somebody who's colorblind, they're almost always males, almost always. And that is what we see. Males uh, are much more likely to get these X-linked recessive traits. Much, much more likely. Well, why? Why are males getting this more than females? Well, this is why. So for a female to have this trait, she would have had to have gotten unlucky from each parent, right? She would have needed to inherit one of those recessive traits, recessive alleles from each parent, right? Lightning essentially has to strike twice. For a male, he has nothing to cover it up. If he gets one of these recessive H's, there's nothing on the Y to save him. And so because of that, um, if you get one, 1x with that recessive trait, you are guaranteed to have that. So if you have, let's say we're talking about color blindness, it's recessive, so it'd be like an x little b. If you inherit this from your mom and you're a male, you are guaranteed to be colorblind. There is nothing on your Y chromosome to save you from that. For females, she would have had to have gotten a colorblind allele from her mom and her dad to be colorblind, okay? There are colorblind females out there, but they're much, you just don't see a lot of them. I would say, again, nine times out of 10, and you probably know somebody who's colorblind, I would almost bet they're a male, okay? And so that's just worth talking about. Normally, kids think, well, it'd be more common in females because they have two Xs, and you have twice the chance. Eh, not really, right? Because you would have to get unlucky twice essentially lightning would have to strike twice there for that female to get that x-linked recessive trait okay um and these are just some diagrams kind of showing you inheritance make i'm not going to go through these right now but make sure you take a look at those and and see what what uh what i was talking about you can see the different situations uh an x-linked uh so um mom's a carrier dad's normal um here dad ha is a uh, has the disorder mom's a carrier here, dad's affected, mom is homozygous normal, and you can see in their offspring, right, what those different scenarios are. And in fact, I think I asked you about this, it's on your assignment, so make sure you pay attention on page 10, and can interpret these diagrams, okay? Let's do a couple examples, and then I want to give you guys time to work on your assignment. I feel like these videos run a little long. So let's say color blindness is an X-linked recessive trait, so it's only found on the X chromosome. We're going to cross a, <clears throat> a normal male with a carrier female. So I have to pick a letter, first of all. I'm just going to use B. Big B, little b. It says color blindness is recessive. So that's going to be, this is going to be color blind. And then capital B then is going to be not being color blind. We'll just say normal vision. Okay, mom is always going to be X, leave a little space, X, and dad is always going to be X, leave a little space, Y, okay? So it says a normal male. So normal is capital B, so dad is going to have a capital B on his X. And mom's a carrier. We had talked about carriers by definition look normal, so they've got to have a capital B but they're carrying that recessive uh, allele that causes that disorder 
on their other X, right? Remember, a mom is going to look normal because of that capital B. You won't even notice that lowercase b. She'll have normal vision, but she's considered a carrier for colorblindness, okay? Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and do our Punnett square. X big B, X little b, X big B, Y. We get X big, X big in the first, X big, X little in the second, X big, Y in the first, and X little b, Y in the, in the fourth, okay? Ladies first. So I have one X big B, X big B, one X big B, X little b, one, oops, one X big B, Y, and one X little b, Y. Phenotypes. Big B says normal vision. This female has two. This female has one. Even though this second one is a carrier here, carrier's not a phenotype. I can't look at you and say, you look like a carrier for colorblindness. We would never know that. And so because they both would be normal vision, we're going to say two normal females. This third one down here, X big B says normal, nothing on the Y. So one normal male and one X little B, little B says colorblind. And again, there is nothing on this Y chromosome to protect him if he gets this recessive B, right? There's nothing on the Y. And so in this case, this male would be colorblind. So what's the percent chance of having a girl that's colorblind? Well, zero, right? One could be a carrier, but she will not be colorblind. So there is 0% chance of having a little girl that's colorblind. Percent chance of having a little boy that's colorblind? You have 25%. Okay. Would you expect uh, color blindness to be more common in boys or girls? We said boys because all you need is one recessive letter and you have the disease. There's nothing on your Y to save you. Okay. And so I, I guess I don't know if I need to go through the rest of these. I think if you understand one of them, um, you'll understand all of them. Okay. Um, and so this is the same type of example. The only thing that's different is Males colorblind and mom's a carrier again. Okay. And so in this case, what you would get is you would get, I'll just kind of skip the Punnett square and give you the genotypes here. You would get one X big B, X little B, one X little B, X little B, one X big B, Y and one X little b, y, right? So now that first one, you would get one normal female, one colorblind female, one uh, normal male, and one colorblind male. Okay. <laughs> And so the last thing I'll say is this. Sometimes I will say things like, of the total offspring, right? Of the total offspring, what's the percent chance of having a little girl that's colorblind? Well, of the total, one out of uh, four, which is 25%. But if I say something like, um, of just the female offspring, or if you were to have a girl, What's the percent chance that she would be colorblind? Or we're looking at of just the female offspring, what's the percent chance that they would be colorblind? Then we would be looking at just girls and we would say, well, one out of two would like they be colorblind. That would be 50%. So just be mindful of that when I'm looking uh, or when you're, when you're answering those questions. Am I asking about of the total offspring? Am I asking about of just the female offspring? Make sure that you're looking at that, okay? Because uh, that might answer or change how you answer those questions, all right? 
Same things hold true. Dominant letters, recessive letters always start with a key. Make sure you remember mom is XX, dad is XY. Make your Punnett square. Write down your genotypes. Put your phenotypes in there. Make sure you don't write carrier as a phenotype. You don't look like a carrier. You can't look like a carrier. And then always note if it's a female or a male <clears throat> in X-linked recess or uh, sorry, in any sort of X and Y-linked traits, um, males and females, it makes a difference in how things are inherited. We're seeing that now. Okay. So make sure you do that. I'll talk about karyotypes when I get back. So uh, good luck with your assignment. You should hopefully get the rest of your packet done um, on uh, Wednesday or Thursday.